Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Ooh. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's Taco Tuesday. It's also Mike Zimmer Day at the Star. Uh, Mike Zimmer will be in today for his interview with the Cowboys. Cowboys uh, interviewed um, Aiden Durden, our defensive line coach, uh, for the position. And we're trying to figure out what's what and who's who. I believe that we're going to probably hear that Al Harris is going to go with the commanders. I don't have any proof of that, any evidence of that. But I feel like this is going to be the case. Um, if we are not hiring from within and changes are coming, I could see the Cowboys, unless they offer him a bigger position, as in a, an advancement, I don't know that he's going to come back. The thing that always bugs me about the Dallas Cowboys is, one, we don't have success in the playoffs, but two, that it seems like we take forever to try to do something. We're always reactive instead of proactive. Regardless of what Jerry Joe's saying, that we're going to make a big splash. A big splash would be you hurrying up and making a move. That we're going to be making a big splash at defensive coordinator. We're going all in. You know, I'm sick of hearing the BS. And I'm trying to keep myself together. Because inver invariably, what will happen is, is this. This is the same cycle we've had. Nothing's changed. Every single year when it comes to the playoffs, we lose, the team gets trashed, Jerry Jones is told he doesn't know what he's doing, the quarterback gets trashed out, you know, they need to move on, they need to draft somebody else, they need to go all into free agency, and then what happens in free agency, we don't do anything in free agency. But by the time the draft comes around, we get excited about the draft picks, we're told how good the Cowboys are at drafting, and then we get to training camp and the Cowboys sign a few journeyman players. By the end of training camp, these talking heads that have trashed us all off season that say you didn't do anything to help you in free agency, that your uh, you know your quarterback is trash, that your front office stinks and is the worst in football, somehow that whole thing changes that the Cowboys are a Super Bowl contender. Cowboys are Super Bowl contender every year, but the Cowboys don't do anything to be a Super Bowl contender when they failed the year before. This is the same cycle. Go back and check the notes from last year. Go back and listen to Mike McCarthy last year. Go back and hear that Mike McCarthy is on the hot seat. Go back and hear that the Cowboys need to move on from Dak Prescott. They need to trade Dak. These things aren't new. They're just repeated. And because we as people have a short memory, when the season starts and the Cowboys start blowing out a few teams, we forget all that stuff. We forget about the problems that we have. Now, we'll find out if Mike Zimmer is going to be the guy. We, we do know that Ron Rivera is supposed to be coming in. We heard there's interest in Wink Markendale. I don't know that that's going to be the case, if they're going to bring him in or not, or if they're going to say, you know, we're sold to Mike Zimmer. I don't know. I just want them to hurry up and make a decision and get that guy in place. Now, the next part of this thing, because the clock is ticking. We're already in the first week of February, and you know there's only 29 days in this month, so it's a shorter month. Legal tampering starts 11th, the 11th of March. You have a lot of your defense that's free agents. Stephon Gilmore, he actually played well. He played really well. And if you put Stephon out there with Diggs and Deron Bland, you got a great back end. So you have to decide if you're going to bring him back and where the money's coming from. You have Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong was compared a couple years ago when we lost Randy Gregory to Randy Gregory, as Stephen Jones said. 
He right there in production. He's been consistent. Seven, nine sacks or so, you know, the last two years. Been a good presence. Your number two sacker. Dante Fowler, journeyman. Guy people thought was spent. Another free agent that could go. Jordan Lewis, seven years here, consistent, came back from injury, was a little bit eh, not quite there to start the season, but got better as the season went on. You have to decide what kind of defense you are going to run and who fits the bill of what you want to do with those guys. And if it's not those guys, letting the walk is not the problem because you still have to find money to either sign them or somebody to replace them. And this is where you have to figure out, do we cut Dak before March? Just say we're going to cut him and get about $29 million for this year, which gives you about $9 million to spend, and you can restructure some other ones. Do you restructure his money, have him play this year, and get yourself about $20 million, which gets you to even? Or do you say, we're going to extend Dak and maybe save about $40 million on the cap, be able to bring back those guys that you deem good enough or the ones you want, and maybe sign some ones that may be better? I have been the Dak Prescott guy. I I make no bones about it. I make none about it. The, The first big video I had was because of Dak Prescott. I looked at him in the Senior Bowl, and I was actually watching for Carson Wentz. But I looked, and I'm not being the college guy. I'm not like Vosh and things. Vosh, he knows all these guys. I just watched as Joe the fan to see Carson Wentz because you know our coaches were coaching it. And to me, Dak Prescott played a lot better. And I'm like, why don't we hear anything about this guy? He played better than Carson Wentz. And looking at his film and some plays, I'm like, this guy is at Alabama in the toughest conference in college football, excuse me, is in Mississippi, you know, going against teams like Alabama and got Mississippi to number one. And I looked around with the guys that he had around him. didn't have, you know, his tight end was drafted in the sixth round. He didn't have playmakers around him. I was like, this guy is the kind of guy you want to draft for the Dallas Cowboys. I said, he's the perfect guy for the Cowboys. Did a video with Joe Boo, and he's doing the, in the whole thing. And nobody watched it until Tony Romo got hurt. So I've always been in the tank. I've always believed in Dak Prescott. I believe that Dak Prescott is a quarterback that's good enough to win a Super Bowl, but he can't do it by himself. And I don't think that anybody can. As great as Pat Mahomes is, if Pacheco is not running the way he was running in that game, I don't think they beat Buffalo. As great as Pat Mahomes is, if that defense of Kansas City doesn't shut down Buffalo. I'm sorry, Baltimore. Just doesn't shut down Baltimore and take the ball away three three times. They're not winning that game. That's a team effort, and that's where you look at it and say, you know, we need our defense to be able to stop guys like Aaron Rodgers on the last drive. We need our running backs to be able to pick up some tough yards and keep a team unbalanced so we can stretch the field. These are things we need to do. Now, I want to go back, and the reason I want to go back, this is two weeks ago right after we lost, and this is the Cowboys are in football hell, and we're ripping Dak Prescott. We need to look at this picture all the way around. Is it that Dak Prescott just needs to change the scenery, that he needs to go not only for the Cowboys to start over, but for himself, you know, to have an opportunity to win one? Because it seems like we are dealing with the messenger instead of the message. This is not new where we are. We did not win. Super Bowl with Tony Romo. Tony Romo was a great quarterback. We failed him. We are failing Dak. We are failing our players. The question is, the Cowboys do what they haven't done before. And that's signed another mega deal with the quarterback. Let's listen to this because this is more 
Let's trash Dak. Guy, because they not growing on tree on trees out here, G. Like, yeah. like if it, you know, the circumstances would change as certain quarterbacks became available. But there's a reason that those quarterbacks are locked up for the next six, seven years with a quarter of a billion dollars or half of a billion dollars. That is the guy in Dallas, unless something became available that would make him a guy. But it's not a lot of those guys to go around in the NFL. So, so let's just put some numbers to this. Obviously, not every loss is on Dak Prescott, but he is now two and five in his playoff career. That's tied for the worst record among 93 <laughs> quarterbacks in history who started at least five playoff games. He goes into next year in the final year of his contract with a current salary cap hit of $59 million. And listen to a former NFL star with a fascinating take on a decision they may go. The one thing that Jerry hasn't tried enough is switching quarterbacks. I know the guy just had an MVP run. You gave Romo 13 years. You given Dak seven, eight years. The same results keep happening. Remember when Tony was done? It was like, oh, it's gonna be better now. It's Dak, Dak's different. Tony couldn't get us over the hump. They're in the same position. Be my guest if you wanna keep spinning the wheel on this thing. Like, I think people deserve chances and Dak's had a ton. Maybe he just needs a change of scenery. When do you get to a point where you're like, this is who that person is. And ladies and gentlemen, that's just the way it goes. Yeah, well, what I do know, Stephen A., is that as a quarterback, you are judged on the wins and losses. Uh, and, and I like that that's the way that it is. Uh, okay. the, the, the wins defined my career. Unfortunately for Dak, we all love Dak. We love what he represents. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, he's paid, everyone is paid to win. Uh, and it's a bottom line business, and they all understand that. That's fascinating, to be clear. That, that, that first voice was Chris Long, um, longtime NFL star, fascinating insight, making an interesting point there about this. And I, 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 it, it is, it is I, I almost felt awkward bringing it up because it sounds so crazy to say, do the Cowboys move on from Dak Prescott? But there's Troy Aikman, the Cowboy legend, saying, we are defined by winning and losing. And I was defined that way. Yeah. Unfortunately for Dak, it right. is that Well, well when you're 3-0 and in Super Bowls, it's <laughs> nice. much easier to say I was defined that way. But that's the reality. I mean, Marcus, what do you think? <laughs> they toted that rock, too, there, Greeny. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying no. Look, Troy Aikman was an all-time great quarterback. Yeah, no one is sure. disputing that. The, the, and, and Dak is a terrific player. But the reality is, in the biggest moments, he hasn't been. Uh, Marcus, you sat in that chair. That I'm pointing to where Kimberly is sitting right now. You were sitting right there. I remember it well. You were here in late August. And you said to me, gee, I don't want to hear about what Dak does in the regular season. Uh, for me, it is all about yeah. moments. I don't care what he does in the regular season. And then the regular season happens, and we always forget about that stuff because you live in the moment. And he had a magnificent season. But when we got to the part that we all agreed mattered, he had a terrible game. He was flat out terrible on Sunday. Yeah. So, Marcus, now what? Listen, uh, we've had, it, when we talk earlier, more blame to go around. Dan Quinn, obviously yeah. Mike McCarthy. Dak Prescott yeah. holds as much at fault as those two guys. And I don't care what anybody said. Well, the defense gave up 41 points. Great. Well, go score 41 points then. Because that's what we are asking. We're asking when it's not perfect. That's why I was so enamored with what, how these conversations would go after this playoff loss about Dak in particular. I said it all season long. Can you respond when it's not going well? Can we walk away saying mm -hmm. you are the reason the Dallas Cowboys was able to win that game when everything was going haywire and the defense couldn't get a stop? and nobody could stop anybody and were you the guy we saw josh allen do it these conversations that have revolved around this year and why do we talk about josh allen and not talk about that because we saw josh allen continue to respond in a playoff situation to patrick mahomes mm -hmm. back to back to back mm -hmm. back to back we don't see that from Dak. We see interceptions for pick sixes. We see a blank stare on his face like he don't know what is going on. It looks like the moment is too big for him. This is a this is a, a consistent now response from Dak Prescott when he gets into the playoffs. And the Tampa performance was great. That was great, right? And I don't take that away from him. But these are the situations where everybody's like, bro, we don't know who you are when you get here. 
can you raise the level one or two times? Because that's what it takes to get to a Super Bowl. So to me, Dak is at as much fault. This game was 14 nothing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if you come down as a quarterback and you make a few plays that the tone and tenor of this game changes for the Green Bay Packers, Dak is as, at as much fault as Dan Quinn and Mike McCarthy. I agree go. with you, Debo. I really do. Here's my question, though. When I look at these notes, you were asked, is Dak Prescott a guy or the guy? And you said, hey, man, yeah. quarterbacks like this don't grow on trees, bruh. And that is my question. I am with you. When we look at the Cowboys, how are we going to upgrade at head coach, at quarterback? We know an upgrade exists head coaching-wise in Bill Belichick. Who's the answer at quarterback? What, if, if Dak is not the answer and you still think he's the guy, what is the better solution for the Cowboys? It's easy, again, it's easy Take to more. say get rid of the quarterback, yeah. but who else? Yeah, but the guy, it, and I thought I explained it clearly, the guy is predicated on what's available. Yeah. The guy changes, right? <laughs> like, like we saw, we saw situations, we've seen these things in the league. You would have said Jared Goff was the guy in Los Angeles until yeah. Matt Stafford became available. You would have said that. So it's not necessarily about Dak Prescott being the guy overall that you would want above anybody I else. Get, but I su get it. Supply and demand matters in this league. So he's but the who guy should they for get Dallas. Is my question. No, they can't get anybody. I, no one is I'm, saying they can't. Right. They but can't the point get, is, so yeah. now you're going to pay the guy sixty million dollars a year, and you're going to pay C.D. Lamb, and you're going to yeah. pay Micah Parsons, and you're going to go out and play with three guys on your team. Yeah. You're basically going to have a roster that has three players on it, and that's going to be the end of it. I mean, this is that is the, you said it before. You're as loyal as your options. Options. They Hello. don't have better options. No one's arguing they do, but it it, it isn't necessarily not a problem just because it's a good problem to have. Yeah, I, I, th I think part of when you read into this game, because and, and I said this, this was the first game that I felt like I would literally lay at the feet of a better team losing to a team that I didn't think was as good, right? From from the McCarthy regime or whatever. I thought, yeah, yeah. Now, you, you can talk about Dak's performance, throwing the interceptions. He should not. The one interception by Alexander was a an, an incredible yes. play, right? Like the pick six was boneheaded. But the, but the, the first pick was – C.D. Lamb had two drops early, right? Like, like there were some other things going on. There was some other frustrations. Like, Jeff, I think I think people think about like what? offensive football being played in a vacuum. It's not played that way. And when your defense is getting run all over, and now you're putting more pressure on the offense. So now we're going to talk about go, let's go elevate it. And I, I hear that argument about Dak Prescott. He can't elevate the same way a C.J. Stroud elevated his team, or a or a Josh Allen elevates his team. Here's the other part. We're talking about Lamar Jackson. They're the number one seed. Last time they were number one, he's what, one and four? So he hadn't quite made that minimum mark. But it's not – so be careful. Be careful when you start talking about where are we going to go. Because I know a lot of people who passed on Lamar Jackson this offseason, yeah. and now the dude's going to be the MVP this season, yeah. right? So everything can change by the quality of things that are happening around you. And I think a running back – actually would have helped Dak be better. Go look at Green Bay's game plan, y'all. It wasn't just Jordan Love throwing the ball all over the field. It was because of what happened first. It all matters. It can't just be one guy that you're trying to single out. Quick final word, Marcus, go. Jeff, 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 I would be with you if it wasn't like three years we watched. I get you. I would yeah. be with you. And, yeah. I've, I, and I've, been, I've been there with Dak Prescott. And let's not forget, too, bro. Like, think about, think about what you would be saying if Devondre Campbell doesn't drop a red zone interception. Think about right. how you would change what you just said in that particular situation. Bro, four doesn't – he doesn't raise to the level you need to in playoff games consistently <laughs> enough for you to think that Dallas can win a Super Bowl. Just take Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff game. After that game was played, those were two quarterbacks that raised their level against going tit for tat. Because if one of them doesn't play well, their team gets beat probably more handily than we saw. Dude, I'm look, it's been it's been enough for me to, to acknowledge that he shrinks in those moments. No. All right, we're gonna leave it right there. What do you think? What do the Cowboys do? It seems like the Cowboys are in a no-win situation. Um, you're not bad enough to try and get up there to draft a quarterback. We're talking about the commanders being the number two pick and wanting Clab Williams, and it's probably going to cost him a second number one to trade with Chicago to get him. 
So if you're talking about trading up, and you remember the Bears traded up to get Mitch Trubisky one space and had to give up several draft picks. For the Cowboys to go from 26 to number one, you're talking about maybe four number ones or three number ones and a bunch of players to get there. And he's looking around the landscape. Well, there's Kirk Cousins that'll be out there who's coming back from ACL. There'll be Russell Wilson out there. And, you know, the usual mismatch of players. I don't know what the answer is. Um, But in order to get better, when you see the Texans turning things around, they had to get awful. They had to go through a one and two win type seasons. You see the Lions had to go through fire a coach after they were going, you know, 0-16 and and things to rebuild. I don't know that Cowboy fans are ready to stomach being bad for a year or two to get to that level. And I know people say, well, look at Texans, man. They turned it around in one year. It wasn't just one year. They were bad for a couple years after trading Deshaun Watson. And they just made the playoffs this year. It wasn't like they went to the Super Bowl and won it. I don't have the answers. I don't know if Jerry, well, apparently Jerry doesn't either because he's been chasing it now. This is 30 years now he's chasing it. What I do know, if taking from that, Jeff Saturday is 100% right about the running back. A running back would help. A running game helps a quarterback settle in. When you can go through and it's second and and three or second and four, you know, as opposed to second and ten every time, it ends up opening up the field. When that defense has to worry about stopping that running back, Aaron Jones ran rough shot over our defense. And once that happened, it made it easier for Jordan Love. We'll find out soon enough how this goes. If the Cowboys are really, honestly, and this is where we're kind of at a crossroads with Jerry Jones. He says Dak is the guy, we're going to do the extension, and and so on, and go all in. Then that is going all in, getting that money, and using it for once. But on the same side, kind of trashes him and acts like, you know, we're not worried about the future. And I don't know which one it's going to be. But if you don't do Dak Prescott before, free agency opens and you let that first two weeks of free agency go through where the premier players that can really elevate the team go, then it's the same old shit. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day. When we get any news on um, the interviews, we'll be sure to bring them to you.